Hi and welcome back to Studio Tamra the Mystical Paintress. Today we are going to be doing a large 24 by 30 cloud painting and it is going to be going in the Menagerie Room Gallery and the Co-Rooter Salon in South Lyon um, for Kelly Rooter. So my shout out today will be to all of the hairdressers um, in the community. I try to always give a shout out to every profession because I don't think everybody gets the appreciation and the thank you they deserve. So thank you to the salon and hairdressers. Um, what I am doing right here is I am pushing the paint up in what is called a ringer. And I believe I got this on Amazon. Um, these are fabulous to save paint. So the ringer. Um, I am going to be needing a lot of paint to do this painting. It's a very big painting. So I'm going to show you exactly which paints we're using. I'm going to bring you in a little closer. Ooh, there you are. All right. Okay. So these are the colors I'm using for the clouds today. I'm using titanium white, violet gray, this is cerulean blue. Ah, this is like a Utrecht um, turquoise blue. Shoot, hold on. Let me see. What? This is the one. I usually only use gram paints, but one of my students at a gallery pulled this out, and it's so cool to add highlights, like for oceans and stuff. It is eh, Utrecht, and it's called cobalt turquoise. So, there you go. Um, all the other paints I use are Graham though. So I have Dioxide Purple, Alizarin Crimson, Naples, Pink, um, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, and Burnt Sienna. So these are the colors I'm using. I, I, I didn't load all the colors that I normally use on my palette um, because I really just want to get these cloud paintings um, completed today. So I have my big turp can and big brushes. I have... Um, Big brushes, big canvas. I also have a big blending brush to fluff them all up when we're done. So, what we are going to do now, we'll get you in as close as we can so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Step by step, I even have a light. Ta da! There it is. Okay. So, uh, let's see. How's that? Is that good? Oh, this is so much fun. I, I heard a phrase today and I love it. And it goes, you need to grow through what you go through. So that's cool. I thought I'd share it. Um, so first step is you've got to decide where do you want your clouds. So I take a little sienna and white from the palette, put some turp on it. Um and just decide, okay, where do I want these clouds to be? So I'm gonna have the first cloud be right here. And I'm gonna try and paint fast with big brushes just to show you all what I'm doing. And I'm gonna have this cloud, oh, got a hair in there, lift that out. Okay, this cloud, is going to go right into this cloud. I know right now you're like, those don't look like clouds, this lady's crazy. I'm not, they really, they will. So, burnt sienna, a little bit of white. This is just kind of building the three-dimensionality. Even though clouds are vapor and they're light, fluffy little happy beings. Um, they have dimension, so. All right, this guy's gonna come in from here down at the bottom. Also something about clouds, and this is really interesting to know too, is that the further back they are, they're gonna be thinner, like a little stripe. And then as they get closer, like when you look up at an angry sky, 
So here, we're gonna do, we're gonna do two. So here's, I'm gonna show you the layout of two different clouds and I'll show you what I mean by that. So here is, oops, oh, got a little blue in there. That's okay, because later we're gonna add blue. This is just like an underpainting. So if you're following along at home and you pick up another color in there, no problem, no big deal. Sometimes these big brushes, when the paint's close together on your palette, they'll just pick it up. Okay, so, man, I had some weird dreams last night, by the way. Anybody else having weird dreams during this quarantine? I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. <laughs> okay, so for example, these clouds, are just kind of floating around, right? So you just kind of, we're going to be building here a nice little fluffy cloud sphere for that, okay? So there's that guy. And I'm just making big strokes, big brush. This cloud, that cloud. Okay, there's one. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys, because the gallery owner actually wants three paintings. One I've already done and she's picked up. And then there's these two. Um, so here's the next thing that I want to show you guys. So as clouds, are further away, right? When you first look up at a cloud, it's, they're huge. Like, oh my God, look at that huge cloud. And then as they go, as they get further away, they get smaller. So like if this right here was the ground, which I don't want ground in this, but if that was the ground, and you had some clouds here, they'd be smaller like this. And then the clouds here, which are a little closer to you, are a little bigger. This is a perspective exercise actually to learn about. Um, and then the big clouds, when you see up the closest, they're the biggest, right? You guys have looked at the clouds when you were little kids. How many of you used to look at the clouds when you were a little kid and see pictures? Say, oh, I see a roadrunner, ah, I see an elephant, I see an angel, or whatever. So, this is a very light wash of burnt sienna and uh, odorless mineral spirits. I have to quit calling it turpentine. Turpentine is the most toxic substance on the planet, and I do not use it. Uh, I, I just call it terp. It's a bad habit I got into um, years ago. So, so we're just going to put real thinned out, burnt sienna. You can add a little white if you want with some odorless mineral spirits. And I'm showing you how. Okay, now this is where you're gonna see the perspective. I'm gonna add a little violet gray. And you'll start to see what I mean by. Okay, so here's a cloud. Notice how I'm moving my brush in every direction and I'm just barely touching the canvas. I'm not doing lines. This whole thing's shaking. We're having a little canvas party. Ooh, painting party. Okay, so there's your farthest, or your closest up cloud, my bad. And then your next cloud. Which, and they don't have to be straight across, and they don't have to go all the way across your canvas, and they can even connect if you want, like this. Let's connect them. They can connect, that's fine. But in, in this particular exercise, I'm just trying to show you the dimension of the clouds. So, see, so that one is your biggest. 
big fluffy cloud. We don't want this line here. We don't want lines. And then we got this cloud. This would be like a rain cloud. Today's a rainy day. That's why another reason we're in the studio instead of outside. I'm going to start painting all the herbs and flowers and vegetables in my garden in plain air. Doing quick little try to keep them under 45 minute videos so y'all at home could follow along and do them if you want to do them too. Okay, so, so this guy's closest. And then this guy. What do I call him, this guy? Am I saying this guy? Oh, sorry, just having a little bit of fun. So here's your next. And you see how now all of a sudden, see how you have a perspective where, oh yeah, those ones at the bottom by the horizon here are the furthest away, for sure. But, um, I'm not going to complete this painting this way because the gallery owner um, didn't want land. She just wants clouds. So just wanted to show you that perspective exercise while we're painting our clouds. And we could even make some angry, ferocious, cloudy, rainy day clouds if we wanted to, couldn't we? So we're just going to get rid of this and add it into this one. Because these are just clouds, like if we were looking up at the sky. That's what these are right now. Okay, so I am going to wipe some of the extra off now. Because, oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Wipe off some of this extra. Just barely touch it to give it a cloudy look. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? It's magic. Okay. I'm going to put on my cool shades because this will really help me see the dimensionality of it all. And yeah, take pictures of your favorite clouds and pictures of you painting clouds and then as you go along here's something else really really cool check this out this is like what William Alexander had it's a splatter box I have it down under my palette and I dip my brush in the turp and then you can just right so if you hear that sound under here and I go That cleans the brush real good. Super easy to make. Stick a dowel rod in a wood box. So, thank you to the Todd for that one. He made me that. I have, have it right here. So, um, this brush is now going to be put aside. And I'm going to get out a flat brush. And I'm going to get this re reassessed so you guys could see what we're doing next here okay so um you can use either size brush that you want I'm actually I think just happy with this 12 this is a 10 um, and what I'm going to do you know what I'm gonna use a 10 because I want to be able to show you guys this so I'm gonna get out this palette and I'm gonna mix some cobalt blue some cerulean blue and some white okay so cobalt blue, cerulean blue, and some white. Make a nice big thick pile because you're going to be using this for your background. Cobalt, cerulean, and white. Okay. Make a nice big, and then we're just going to put it in. You got to use a little bit of turp too to get the paint to move sometimes. But we're going to just be putting it in. Where the sky goes, right? Oh my gosh, this is so easy. Anybody could do this. I know. I hope you guys are doing this at home. This would be a really cool painting for you to put behind your couch. Okay. And um, if you don't want to look at a cloud reference, you just make them up. I had a cloud reference on my iPad for my other cloud, and then 
This one here, I just decided to just make it up. They're just vaporous puffballs of wonderful floating moisture, so you really can't screw them up. So everywhere that it's white, everything white is going to get sky because the burnt sienna is where I put my clouds, right? And there we go. So fill in all your white area with blue. I might do one of these at the gallery when I teach my workshop there this summer. We might do some clouds because clouds are fun and they match the decor in every room of your house. They give you that dreamy, happy feeling from when you were a kid and you were looking up at the clouds and imagining the possibilities of life. I remember when I was a kid, I wanted a dog so bad. And on one night a day, I was in the yard just laying on my back, looking up at the sky, and I said, oh my gosh, I see a dog in the clouds. And then I wrote, Tammy needs a dog on the sidewalk, with sidewalk chalk. All right, there we go. And the other thing is you want things to be different shapes. You don't want your clouds to look like a bunch of um, perfectly equal balls hanging in the sky. Balls, I said balls, that's not cool. I said balls hanging in the sky. <laughs> okay, not good. But you know what I mean. You don't want it to look like polka dots. So you want your clouds to be all different shapes. Super easy to do. You just have to be aware not to make them all the same. Some artists do polka dots with flowers or apples on trees or clouds just because the human mind wants things to be all the same. I don't know why, but. So you starting to get the idea of where the clouds are gonna be? It's pretty easy stuff. It takes a lot of paint. It does use a lot of your paint, and I usually do use bigger brushes, but I'm hoping to get this. I'll lay it in here. And don't forget to use a little bit of your um, odorless mineral spirits, too, just to Keep the paint moving. Okay, this one I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do the bottom blue, a little more cerulean, or you can use manganese in place of cerulean with cobalt and white, and I just mix it, dip it in the odorless mineral spirit, and put it down. There's some people wondering, oh, I wanna see how you mix it. Okay, I'll show you. Super easy, but no problem. I'll show you. Let me just get this color on the board here. Is this starting to look a little bit like a cloud, guys? I think so, yeah. Okay, so this is what I mean when I say to mix them. So I take a little cobalt, a little bit of the manganese or cerulean, and a little white. Mix, just like that. Then dip it in the turp, right? If it's too blue, you want it whiter, add white. If you want your skies to have a little bit of a violet look, add purple, but be very careful because a little bit of purple goes a long way. So, okay, there it is. So, 
if you when you want to get to the bottom sometimes it's tricky depending on which easel you're using so I'm gonna do this I want this one to have a little more three dimensional three dimensionality so I am gonna actually I'm not gonna put in the the horizon but I am gonna I'm gonna do it like that Just to really give it some, see how it comes forward that way? It's really cool. Okay, so there is our outline. And when you take a step back from it, do, 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 do. I think the outside window is screwing us up to the light from coming in from outside, but, uh, all right, so how we doing? Okie doke. So, uh, next step, you can either use your same brush or you can get a clean one. I, I usually just use the same one, but uh, let's see, let's get this nice and, okay. Um, I just want a little bit bigger brush, so I'm just gonna, Dip this in here. Here goes my box. There we go. If you've ever watched William Alexander, he was uh, back in the Bob Ross days, he had that box attached to his easel and it was awesome. Okay. So now I'm gonna be using All right, let me show you how to get my palette. I'm gonna be using ultramarine blue. Uh-oh, a little bit too much turpentine on there, or odorless mineral. Little purple, just a little, and violet gray. That's the best color, I love it. Get it from Char Jerry's Artorama for a dollar a tube or something like that, it's cheap. It's in the 50 shades of gray. So you have this like mean purpley color, add a little more blue so it's not too purple. So you have this kind of angry sky color. I also have a little cup here of walnut oil. And I just use walnut oil from the grocery store, especially with the Graham paints because they are walnut oil based paints. And then you can just come in. Don't worry if you think it looks too dark or, um, you know, don't worry about that at all because you can always add white. Oops. That you should worry about. We don't want drips. I mean, they can be fixed, but we just don't want them. Okay. So you can either swirl your brush like this, or you can go back and forth. This is a 12, this is the size of brush. So much fun. Everybody says, how do you do that so fast? How much is a painting? Per hour, well, first of all, practice. And uh, it's not per hour, it's 48 years of painting to where you can get to where you know how the brush will move, how the paint will move, what colors to mix. Um, when you buy things from artists, you're not buying a by the hour service, you're buying a skill, a trait that took a lifetime to learn and hours and minutes of their life go into it. It's funny, like one day, you know, people will always ask me, how much is it? How many hours does it take you? And, uh, you know, it's like if you were an electrician and I said, well, this painting's gonna take me 40 hours. How much would an electrician get paid for 40 hours of work? Most artists don't make as much as that, so. Anyways, okay, I am, I'm talking, and I forgot to explain what I'm doing. I'm adding white into the purple. When you add white, titanium white at the edge of the brush, into the purple, you get this dreamy, fluffy, cloudy look, and it breaks the sharp, dark colors that were in the cloud, see? Maybe this would be easier for you to see without the light. Is it easier to see without the light? Yeah, I think. 
think it is. Okay. So I'm just kind of putting these in. I don't really have a plan. I'm just putting in a little dark here and there. Touching it with white. Move the brush all different directions. You don't want to co color the whole entire thing in because if you color the whole entire thing in, then you don't have any dimension in your cloud anymore. Then it's just a big fluffy purple floating wad in the sky. And that doesn't look like a cloud very much. So this is already kind of starting to look like a cloud. So what you'll notice when you're painting big sections like this, you need a lot of paint. So I need to mix more paint now. Violet gray, purple, cobalt. You want it a little darker. Add more um, ultramarine blue. Like this one, I'm gonna put a little dark there. I'm not gonna leave it dark like this, for sure I'm not, so just so you know. Any of you wondering? Okay, add a little white. <clears throat> a little more white. You notice I'm kind of leaving the colors broken because the last thing you want is a solid color blob. And I'm holding the brush really at the end here. You can hold the brush however you want for clouds. It's not like, this is so relaxing and meditative. It's not like when you're doing a portrait and you know, oh, every single eyebrow, every hair has to be perfect. Don't screw it up. That's work, that's mental stress when you're painting those kind of things. That's, this is like the opposite. This is like freedom because you can't really screw it up. I mean. Nobody knows what these clouds look like because nobody's ever seen them. You're, you're creating them. So it makes it way more fun for you. Okay. Well, it quit raining outside, but it's still pretty scary and ominous out there. Dark gray skies. On cloudy, overcast days, it's great to do plein air painting because uh, the, the light stays the same for a long, long time. Whereas most days, you know, you have about an hour before the light changes, and then it changes again and again and again. And if you're a rookie, you're going to struggle terribly because your scene is going to change every time you look up, unless you can paint in under an hour. Um, so cloudy days are great for plain air for people that are new or for big plain air paintings. Um, I like real sunny days when I'm doing structures like barns because then you have um, real dramatic lighting and that gives the three-dimensionality to the barns and whatnot. So, all right. So as you can see here, I've kind of got my, my clouds are kind of starting to look like clouds, aren't they? Are yours? Are you following along at home having a wonderful time? I hope you are. I would love to see these. Okie doke, there is the dark, dark darks. And now, we're gonna go in and add some white and a little pink to some of these. This is where you gotta play with it a little bit, especially if you're using the same brush. Just gotta play with it a little. Put some different colors in there. Some white, some pink. I have Rod Doberman here at my feet, leaning on me. It's always fun to try and paint when you got a dog leaning on you like this. And then you take your brush, when it still has a little bit of leftover paint, and if you wanted to have a little cloud 
kind of disappear into the blue. You just light, so you press, press, and then you lift, 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 lift. And that's how you get that look. Press, lift, 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 lift. Because you don't want to just smear it on there, and then it'll just be a line, right? So it's all practicing, playing with the brushes, make friends with them, name them if you want to. This brush we're going to call Herbert, just because I just told you to name them. So, hi, Herbert. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Okay. Now, I kind of do like some of these yellows and these um, colors underneath in here. I do kind of like them. So I think what we'll do is the way to save them is you clean your brush, right? If you have a box, okay, ta-da! Then take a little bit of Naples yellow. This is what I'm gonna do, take a little Naples, little bit of that burnt sienna, I mean a little bit. See how much is on my brush? Very little bit. Tiny, the, the, let's say the edge of it, the corner. A little more, and then add white, and then bring in the yellow, dip it in the odorless turp, I mean mineral spirit, more white. Now we have this dreamy creamy color. And we're gonna try and see how does it look when we put it in here. Oh, not bad. See that dreamy, creamy color we just put in? I like it. If it's too dark, add white. Too white, add whatever colors you want in there. I'm gonna add a little more white. I'm gonna let that guy go right off. I'll put a little bit here. And this is not that different from the color underneath. The purpose of putting it in is because you gotta cover your board and paint. And the underpainting stuff was just that. It was just underpainting. So this is a way to kind of maintain some of your lights. Mm. Whee, isn't this fun? Yes, I love it. What do you think, Ra? Yes, he loves it. Okay, that's good. Kiddo, kiddo, kiddo. This brush has got such long bristles. I'm not used to a brush with bristles this long, but it seems to be working pretty good for clouds, doesn't it? And then you just constantly got to fluff them. Fluff, 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 fluff. The clouds are so fun. I didn't really think that it was this much fun to paint these until I started doing these big paintings of them. And this is really fun. A lot of joy and happiness goes into these. I wonder if when people look at them, they feel the, the joy and the happiness. I hope so. The one that I just did, a friend of mine saw it before Kelly came to pick it up for her gallery and she said, I see a bird in there, it's like a dove. I said, yes, this is just like looking at clouds when you're a little kid. You're, you're gonna see things, so. I don't know if this cloud up here is just a little bit angrier or what's going on with this guy, but. Okay, I just don't want to have anywhere that... Yeah, when I step back and look at this, this definitely looks like clouds. It's the fun. It's very fun. So that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted to have a fun painting where I saw some clouds.
Need a little bit of movement here. There we go. Yeah, these are some... Imagine how much stuff you would see if you were a cloud, <laughs> or if you were on a cloud. You look down, you'd see the whole world. Okay. This brush is just not moving the way I want it to. So I'm gonna hit it over here in my odorless terp can. Hit it on my box. I'm gonna get this one out now. This is a size 12 bristle brush, flat. And I'm gonna load my brush. Come in here and kind of do these now. That's I have a little more control with this. Not that you need control over the, doing clouds, but eh, sometimes it's just nice to have. So oftentimes when you see these complicated, massive cloud scenes in galleries or shows or in furniture uh, galleries or in people's homes and you think, oh my gosh, those are so difficult. Probably the painter that did them had a fabulous time. A little cloud party. I should have my friends over and have a cloud party painting where we all paint clouds. Like a wine and paint. That'd be fun. So I'm already starting to run out of paint. And I'm not done. Is this starting to look like clouds to you guys? I'd love to see in the comments what you think. You probably think I'm crazy, huh? She lost her damn mind. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I don't want to lose my lovely underneath darks. So, I just wanted to make sure that I had enough paint on here, and then I will show you guys the finishing touches and how you finish it up. So, I'm going to grab my white, titanium white. This is Graham paint, walnut oil based. You could eat it if you wanted to, as long as it's not the cobalt or the cadmium. Those are also toxic chemicals. Um, I'm gonna take a little straight white with just a tiny bit of the Naples yellow, and that should give me a real bright, there it is. See that? Just a little bright. I just wanna put that in a couple of these too. The problem with this is a lot of times you like it so much you'll overdo it, and if you overdo it, it loses all of its power. So. All right, just look at your clouds and think, okay, where do I need? Oh, this is really fun. I really like this painting already. I love it. put a little Naples and white at the bottom here. You can use pink if you want. You can use gray, but we gotta get, gotta break up these dark darks down here. Make them look fluffy. Okay, and then if you think your blue is a little bit too blue, you can add a little gray or white to the mixture, and that'll kind of chill your blue out. See how it'll chill it out? 
I kind of like my blue, but if you want to chill it out just a little, remember clouds are fluffy. There shouldn't be edges, shouldn't be hard edges here. So like over here, this is a little bit too blue. I don't want to put a little white and a little purple in there. Just a little. And this is just a quick one too. This isn't, you know, one of those paintings. I have some cloud paintings, like the other ones I'm gonna do for Kelly's gallery. I'm probably gonna spend a little more time on. But I really wanted to get a video out and show you guys how to do this in case you wanted to try. Cloud paintings, fun and relaxing and meditative. And look at that! A little bit of pink, right in here, maybe. Swirl your happy little brush up, or your angry brush. This brush's name will be Henrietta. You guys better help me remember that. I'm not gonna remember these names I gave these guys. The only names I remember are like my pets. Okay, so the angry cloud, and then woo, it fades away. And take your big, we'll call her Bertha, ha! And just, this will get rid of all the lines. Make your clouds fluffy and beautiful. It's kind of like when you do this with a portrait painting. I don't know how many of you do portrait painting, but when you do a portrait, you need that skin smooth as silk. You don't want to see all the brush lines, unless it's a real modern, cool one. Sometimes you do. But, so I just go ahead in there and some of these aren't moving the way I want them to. Most of them are. Oh, this is so pretty, I love it. Put it up above your couch, and every time you look up, smile and be happy. Because you did it. You did it. You finished your cloud painting. And from back here, how's it look? Let's see. Oh, let's see. I dig it. Do you like it? Well, I hope you had fun painting clouds today. And if you enjoyed my video, please hit the like button and subscribe. It's free. And thank you again to all my Patreon followers. Apologize for the bad hair. You know, it's COVID. I need highlights. And I, don't, I really haven't been doing anything with the hair. Who cares? Have a super day. Sending positive energy out to everyone. Bye-bye.